We've signed up over 40% of the membership in, in the Walmart and uh, in Thompson. And the second part now is to go and win the vote. It's the end of June, and there are just days left now until that vote. Since spring, UFCW has been selling its merits to Walmart workers. That support has to be solid now. We need that vote out. It's critical. This is going to be their biggest job since April 21st that we've been working on this campaign. It's all for naught if we don't get our vote out. The theory goes, if it can win just one Walmart store, the union can use that win to get all the Manitoba stores, then maybe everywhere else. But they need that first store. So tell me about the unions down in the States. Are they watching this? Oh, I'm sure they are. <laughs> yes, I, I think uh, Thompson, quite frankly, uh, is the spot in the labor movement uh, throughout Canada and the United States right now. Knowing that, the UFCW has changed tactics in Thompson. It's keeping a low profile, well away from the store. Instead, organizers deliver their message directly to the workers' homes. All right, so then we'll do that, make those phone calls. I guess what we'd like to do is know which poll you're going to vote at, so that if you don't vote at it, we're going to come and pick you up. In fact, we'd love to give you a ride to the poll. I'm phoning to let you know that there's a vote taking place on Friday. The union is doing everything it can to win Thompson. It doesn't just want this victory, it needs it. A big chunk of UFCW's membership work in Safeway and other big grocery stores. Walmart's expansion plans include large grocery departments, and that's a serious threat. And while Walmart fights to keep the unions out, UFCW is equally aggressive. On both sides of the border, it runs an anti-Walmart internet campaign, calls the company a bully, and even encourages consumer boycotts. Analysts say for the UFCW, the stakes are extremely high. So Walmart would then provide competition, non-union competition, to these unionized uh, employers, and there would be pressures in their own collective bargaining for moderating wage increases or some rollbacks. Okay, critical we do this. UFCW's mastermind on the ground knows the stakes are high for his union, but Colin Tregwell says he's fighting for workers. Yeah, anything, anything we can do to help, we will. They're not doctors, but they're professional in what they do, and I, and I say that they deserve a decent living, and that they can go out and have a place of their own, and they should have that right. And whatever that costs, I believe that every worker, whether they're unionized or not, should have that right. Yes. In fact, it's what's motivating him to continue working. Tregwell is the son of a union man, has always believed in the movement, but this year he was due to retire. That's it. Instead of coasting to the end, Tregwell chose to take on a giant. I got grade 8 education, um, and I don't regret not having a grade 12 or going to university. Um, this was my calling and I enjoy it. I mean, this is, when I can help people, this is the field I want to be in. Are you and really that idealistic? Yes, I am. Yep. Even after all these years? After all these years, I wouldn't trade this for anybody. But on voting day, this great battle will be out of his hands and out of Walmart's hands. It will be decided by the workers themselves. Workers like Christina Barber, who's getting ready for high school graduation. For many of them, it's not about ideology, and frankly, they could go either way. Other than the morning cheer, <laughs> it was um, great. Like, I love the people that I work with, and I had really good hours all the time. And whenever I needed help, I could usually get it. Walmart has just been Barber's after-school job. She'll be voting yes. Just thinking about, like, the older employees that are my friends that I work with, I'd like to see them have better conditions while they work there. Hopefully it'll work here, I think. It's a good idea. So just well, your hands off, right? Yeah. Crystal King says she doesn't need the improved benefits the union is promising her. She'll vote no. Well, like my mom, like we, I have uh, benefits through my husband's work, so, you know, I don't really need them. Her mother, Susan Milligan, is one of those few employees with a strong opinion. I don't like the idea at all. 
because we've got everything we need now. What do we need a union for? Pay union dues for what we're already getting? You know, it's just stupid. Like, we don't need it. I don't want it. That kind of talk gets the union's attention. But there's more evidence that the store is heating up. Some of the no's have been handing out an anti-union leaflet. Where, where did this, where did this oh, come from? Handed out last night. Handed out last night. Like, what is this one about? What think about okay. what union contracts? Can, I mean, I brought my contract to. Shh, Chris, okay. got nothing to worry about. But see, what they do is they take people who are inexperienced and they put that stuff and they say, well, and this stuff must be true. If it's in writing, it must be true. There's no indication Walmart has been part of it. In fact, Walmart's only communication with its workers has been to say it will not close the store in Thompson. The company has done nothing to influence the vote, and it's confusing the union. Are you waiting for the other shoe to drop? Yes. Yes, i got to say that I am. Um, it may not drop, and that's great. Because ultimately, we just want to have a democratic decision and the employees decide without intimidation. Um, and yes, I, I am waiting for that other shoe to drop. In the meantime, they can only guess whether this wilderness will make it onto the Walmart battle map as the first victory for a union or the latest victory for Walmart. For The National, I'm JoLynn Shane in Thompson, Manitoba. The Labor Relations Board will begin hearing the Walmart case next week.